Abeg, hello and a very warm welcome to Brand Equity with me, Sonali Krishna. Today, I am sitting with an icon and by far, she must be one of the biggest icons in the film industry. It's none other than Zina Taman. Uh, what an honor to be sitting next to you and actually, you know, talking to you. You are definitely uh, the biggest icon that the film industry has seen. So it's an honor to be sitting here and interviewing you, Zina Ji. Thank you for your kind words, Sonali. Appreciate it. One of the few things that's, that's left everybody, you know, even more in awe of you is the way that you've come back and managed to kind of reinvent yourself, adapt, be nimble enough to look at modern day platforms and, you know, express yourself. Uh, how has that journey been for you? It's actually been very organic. Um, it wasn't something I set out to do because I'd been out of the public eye for many years and I really valued my privacy. But my kids were very insistent. They said, you know, you have so many stories to tell and things to say and opinions and what have you. Why don't you get on Instagram? And, you know, um, I thought about it and eventually I did. So, um, and then I did whatever was uh, natural at the time, which was, you know, not just uh, posting a picture, but having a little caption with it to uh, which would be relevant to the picture. So I think that people like that. They like the little caption that went with the photograph and um, I got a very lot of positive feedback which I wasn't expecting and so much love that it was overwhelming. It, it is indeed and you know the thing is I think you have a little bit of yourself in your self-expression on Instagram in particular. Uh, is it something that you do which is spontaneous or have you thought about it like, you know, most celebrities today think through their social media strategy and craft it. And so it's, it's quite rehearsed. It's not really spontaneous. I've never had a strategy, Sunani. Never in my life, and least of all with Instagram. It's just, it's just very organic. It may be something with my family, with my pets, or I saw an old photograph from an old film. And you know, it's nothing planned uh, in any way. Completely would, authentic. Completely. And I will discuss it, you know, with, with, uh, with my team, which is my son and my daughter-in-law, and I will uh, take their input on it and what they think, and then I'll post. I see, I see. Um, you know, I have to ask you this. Uh, you know, in the yester years where you were one of the biggest, you know, uh, Bollywood icons. And like you, a few others, there was this kind of mystery and mystique that surrounded stars like yourselves. And today, it is actually uh, very important for all celebrities to put themselves out there. So whether what book they're reading, to uh, if they're doing some wardrobe cleaning, to which vacation they're taking, everything is out there. So we kind of know their minute to minute detail of their lives, which kind of sucks that, you know, that big celebrity status that people like you enjoyed, right? Uh, would you say revealing too much, because we live in this world today where we're so excessive with our information, uh, doesn't tense, you know, we're in a world which is bereft of superstars? Um, so, Nani, I can't speak for anybody else. I can only speak for myself. So, as an actor, I was viewed on stream um, according to what the director or the producer or the filmmaker wanted. It was never me. It was a character. In the tabloids, I was viewed as a, as a commodity. And stories were written to sell the magazines, which had nothing to do with me. Nothing. So for me, Instagram has been a platform where I can express myself. I can make my voice heard. I can express an opinion which is not that of a producer or a director or a journalist wanting to sell a magazine. I, I can just be who I am. So that's how I have viewed my Instagram journey, for me personally. Right, 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 right. Uh, you know, Zinutabad, today, we see so many more women who are at the helm of what they're doing uh, and in control and negotiating 
their rightful um, you know, equity in the space they are, whether it be in advertising, whether it be in films. And we see pe women being more assertive, right? Um, it was different during your time. Definitely. Right? Uh, do you see a very big change in the way women are negotiating their power, you know? Yes, I do. It's taken a while, but it's happening slowly. They're not yet there. We're still in the midst of patriarchy, but uh, it's come a long way since uh, when, when I was an actor yeah. in the cinema, and it was totally male-dominated industry. It still is to a large extent, but that also hinges on economics, because, you know, films with... Uh, with men in the lead tend to do much better than uh, you know just women oriented stories of course there is uh, new wave cinema parallel cinema and what have you and now with the uh, streaming platforms available there are a plethora of subjects that are being explored yeah uh, i would also have to say that you know when you look at let's say the 70s and the 80s and and the films that were made then of course there were also there your, their share of trashy films, but most of them were quite ahead of the curve in terms of storytelling, in terms of narratives, in terms of, like for instance, you were, you know, India's biggest sex symbol and we loved you for that, right? Uh, today, cut to, you know, so many decades later, I think somewhere the storytelling has become a little bit more conservative and the audience has become a bit more conservative in the storytelling and narrative. I would call it regression of audience and storytelling. Do you uh, really think so, Sonali? I think so. You know, because I really, you know, from what I have gathered, as I watch, you know, a lot of the uh, stories and films and web series uh, uh, made by Indian filmmakers, especially streaming on uh, yeah, streaming, international yes. platforms, I think there is such a range. There's, you know, whether it's uh, drama or thrillers or, you know, you uh, actually fiction like Sanjeev Bansali created with Hira Mandi, you know, with that background, quite elaborate and beautiful. There's such a vast number of a variety of genres uh, that people can view at their fingertips. So, yes, but I'm talking about yeah. mainline commercial cinema. You know, not like, not films like Kiran Rao's making like Lapata ladies or whatever, which are very real, rooted. Yeah, you know, but, but that's also life. part of cinema, isn't it? It's cinema because you're just doing the same thing. You're just releasing it on a different platform. Sure, sure. So I don't necessarily agree with that comment. Okay, okay. So you think there has been quite a steady progression in terms of narratives and storytelling? Absolutely, absolutely. And a vast variety of the kinds of films that have been made. And what about the audience? Would you say the audience has evolved? The audience has too much to choose from. It's a smorgasbord. It really is. There's so much. So it's generally people are just surfing, you That's know, true. to something, you know, they hook onto something and uh, stay with it. If you look at, let's say, Hollywood, right, and look at the kind of progress uh, women like female stars have made in terms of negotiating power, in terms of female leads. And you juxtapose that with our film industry. How much of a, of a road do we have to travel? A lot of the women in Hollywood are producers. They produce their own films. Mm. They are making their own films for themselves and giving themselves you know, the, you know, the main part to play. I don't see a lot of that happening here. That's not happening. And that's where the big change will come from, right? is where more women take on a producer role. But we are seeing more acceptance, you're saying, in this space, uh, because we're seeing more, you know, we've been, it was, it's a lot more corporatized than it, than it was in your time. So that corporatization has become a lot, I mean, in the sense that it's become a lot more disciplined. But I'm given to believe that uh, it was the artist's world in the 70s and 80s, and now it's here, it's more the producer's world. Would that be accurate? Absolutely. I think, you know, we've lost, you know, at that time, Sonali, nobody signed a contract. Everything was verbal. Really? There was no contract. You know, you talked, you found a role, you know, this, you were given a date, and you went. And the contract was signed at the end when your work was finished as a formality for income tax. 
Now, there are 30 pages of the contract that you have to go through before you actually do something. There was a great sense of camaraderie and warmth and friendship and Trust. Kana Jana and Kana Gharse and you know, all of that. They, they used to be an atmosphere family on the sets. Not oh, anymore. Not anymore. Though I have to say that there is a producer that I have worked with, Manish Malhotra, who evokes the same, you know, as in those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same one. So you, you're trending on Instagram. I mean, Zina Taman is, you know, like, wow, Zina Taman is on Instagram. Your following is kind of, you know, from, I think, week one has been amazing. What's your plan in terms of scaling that? Are you looking, do you have an ambition of scaling that and converting that into something? No, I'm, I'm just enjoying the journey. Just enjoying the journey. Enjoying the journey. Because, Sonali, I live in today. You know, where I am in my life now, I'm grateful for every new day, I'm joyous in every new day, and I am living in today. But you'd be open to brand endorsements. Of course, I've, Why done, not? I've done quite a few. How, how's that going? Yeah, good. yeah is, there, is there a way, because brand endorsements are so big now, and influencer uh, kind of endorsements on Instagram is so big now. But I don't want to clutter my Instagram with too many endorsements. So I do a few. And, uh, are you discerning about which brand yes, you are? very much. So. You are. What very would be your process? I would, I would like to promote a brand that I approve of, that I like, that I know is genuine. And that is, it's not just an impact, but uh, you know, that they actually deliver. What would you say about uh, the world we live today. It was a very different world back in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> and I'm sure there are positives, but there are a lot of negatives as well. I want you to tell me that, juxtapose those two worlds and give me a sense of, of, of that world versus this. You know? So I tell you, we were shooting for Satyam Shivam Sundaram in a farm in Loni, which is quite a few miles out of Pune. Right. Okay. We were shooting on celluloid. All right. Then we would prepare the cans and everything would be done for a few days. And then those cans carefully in an air-conditioned car would go all the way to the... Uh, studio. To the studio where they would be processed. And then two weeks later, we'd get them back and we would be able to see the rushes of the work that we'd done. Okay? So there was anything to be done or altered or something went wrong, we could fix it. Now, you give a shot, you go check the screen. <laughs> huge difference, huge difference. Now, when you ask about endorsements, the downside is that, oh my God, everything wants everything done yesterday. You know, people who are reaching out for endorsements, for collabs, for whatever, it's boom, 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 you know, calling now, yeah, you know, it's just mad, sure. you know, it's mad, it's quite mad, yeah, so that's the downside. There is, so that you, you might say that given your experience and what you've seen, you might, there is a need for people to take a pause. Yes, to, to, yeah, not to be so frenetic, you know. Because it's, oh, we've got to do this. Oh, we've got to give it in. Oh, we've got to do this, you know? So because I like to take my time, I like to assess, I like to, you know, discuss, decide, and then get, no, 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 I need it now, 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 now. It's a now, 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 now generation, yeah. Do you think in this frenetic pace that everybody wants things done yesterday and also in this world where we are bombarding people with content, right? A lot of it is getting lost. No, I don't know that all, a lot of it is getting lost. I think that all, you'll always find takers for something. Sure. You'll always find takers for something. And uh, it's kind of wonderful in a way, you know, that uh, everybody at that time, there were stars, you know, there were people, few people who were famous. Now everybody's famous, so it's all good. But is that essentially a good thing? As I said, it's all good. Is that a good thing? Yeah, it's a good thing because you can you have a voice and you can put it out there and those who like it will like it and those who don't won't. You know, because the kind of awe like a Zida Taman or Amita Bachchan would kind no, of No, I'm not have. talking about myself. I'm talking about everybody. I get it. There's a great, you know, democracy. 
uh, that has been created yes. by the internet. Yes. You know, where yes. everybody can get out there and express themselves. And what I think is that uh, in terms of legacy, you know, they leave a generational legacy, hopefully of compassion, ethics, and why not? But, but don't you think, because everybody today has the power to express, right? It's democratized. That's exactly what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody and everybody can write a book, can express an opinion, whether they're qualified or not, right? Tomorrow I can build an Instagram page and if I have enough followers, uh, whether I'm qualified or not, I become a superstar. And there is a danger in that. In, no, what no. is the danger? I, as a viewer, have to discern whether I want to follow you or not. So what is the danger in that? Because the viewer is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Because so the no. dumb person can decide if they want to yeah. follow you or not. I'll just go and say, these are the five things you should be doing in your life. Eat this, eat that. I have no qualifications. I'm not prolific in the subject. But you know, because I'm posting and bombarding, but, but, I'm building a follower. But, if I have good presentation style. But you can't stop that, you know. And it, it is up to, you know. It is up to the viewer if they want to go, go with that or not. Right. Tell me, if Zina Taman was transported in today's world, right, how do you, do you think you would have crafted your career and become the Zina Taman you were today? Or would you, be, would you, would you craft it differently? It was a different time. It was a different time. It was a different time. What would it be today? If I asked you to, it's a hypothetical question. Just, you know. I think the competition is a lot today. It's today. very, yeah, it, it was competitive then. But if you had the opportunity, you know, you could seize it. Right now, everybody is looking for the opportunity. So it is very competitive. So you're saying stars today have it a lot tougher? If you want to become a star today, not, you star, not people who are stars. But if you're a newcomer and you want to become a star, it's 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 a, it, it's a much tougher journey. But 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 Zina Ji, you you didn't have any godfather in uh, the film industry, did you? But I was lucky that one of my earlier films, Hari Rama Hari Krishna, became a big hit. The music was very successful. The film was a hit, and then people started approaching me for work. And also the fact that you are outstandingly good looking. No, that I don't know, but uh, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, that is established, an established fact. So you don't have to be humble about that. But I'm saying, you're saying you got, got lucky, but before that, was there enough hustle that you had to, to kind of, you know, ensure? No, I didn't, I didn't hustle. No hustle? I, no hustle. I had no hustle. I was a model. I was working. I won an international title. I did a couple of films that didn't do too well, I had a five-day role in one and a five-day role. And then I got cast in Hari Rama Hare Krishna. And that exceeded beyond everybody's expectations. So then the producers started approaching me. And I had Yadon Ki Barat, Churaliya. And then, you know, then I had uh, lovely music and lovely films, Hira a lot of films. I worked in 80 films as the main female protagonist. 80 films? 80. Uh, main th and not counting all the cameos and special appearances and like that. So, you know, it just all started rolling and didn't stop for 15 years. I started work as a teenager. I stopped working when I was eight months pregnant with my first son. So I had a whole journey in Indian cinema. But you know, today people who, del who uh, you know, people who have children, like especially women, are now you know, much more confident to get back to their career. Uh, was it like that in your time? I didn't want to. You didn't want to, you were done? I was done. Ah, okay. I'd been in the glare for of too long. public life for too long. I was really happy to hang up my boots and be with my family. And it's part of the reason why I stopped. But when you hang your boots, you decide that, right? I decided that sure. for myself. Sure, Yeah, I did get work offers even after my son was born, but I didn't want any part of it. But how do you deal with suddenly 
taking the back seat, right? From being but this I don't constant. view it like that. You know, I don't know whether you're a parent or you, if you're married, I don't know. I'm not. Either. Yeah. So <laughs> when you become a parent, the most important thing in your life, especially for the first five years of your child's life, nothing more important than your child. Nothing. And uh, I had so much of fame and, you know, I, I was looking for emotional security. And my kids gave me that. Right, so you don't feel that you ever need, you are clear that you didn't want to go back. Very clear. Very clear. Mm -hmm. Very clear. So after how many years did you have that realization? In 15 years? 15 long years. Time. Long time. Long time. Long uh, time. Is it uh, for a star like of your stature, all this constant media glare and constant spotlight? Well, that's why, that's why I wanted time out, far away from all of it. Therefore, to come back on Instagram, I really had to think about it. The do I want to and do this. And what changed your mind? My kids. They, yeah, okay. They pushed me. They pushed you. Right. And how, and are you liking that adulation, that expression? Are you enjoying it? You are it's been a year. It's been a year. And I'm enjoying it. And what is your following today? I think about 750. 750 million. You know, I mean, people have millions. Mine is quite modest, but it's the engagement level that is quite high. But you're saying when people actually communicate with you? Yeah. And do you respond? Yes. Really? Not to everybody. Of course. Right. Of course. Of course. Uh, are you looking to make a comeback in, uh, into... I'm not looking to do anything. But if it comes your way? Yeah, I'm, I'm already finished working on two projects. Yeah? yeah. Which one? Are, which one? One is Bantiki, produced by Manish, Manish Malhotra. Okay. And there's another project, which is a web series with British Nandik communication. Oh. So my work in both is are over. But, I, but you're doing it what? I, I, like at your pace and only if you love the script? I don't want to prove anything to anybody at this point in time in my life. Yeah, sure. I'm doing this for my pleasure. If I like the people I'm working with, if I like the script, I do. What would be your advice uh, to producers, to marketers who come to you for, you know, collabs, paid partnerships? What would be your piece of pearl of wisdom to them? To marketers, <laughs> they know their business better than me. What no, would but I sometimes an outside in perspective is, is has to be respected because you're so much in your echo chamber that you can't see beyond. No, I would, I, before I agree to anything, I would like to know the script. I would like to know what is expected of me. I would like to know where I fit into this whole thing before I make a decision. And it's the same for films. What, what would be your advice to stars and filmmakers today? I mean, who am I to give advice, Baba? Are yours either, I Baba? No, no, so what? I, stars and filmmakers, they know their job. They might know their job, but again, you're an outside perspective. You've seen a different no, world. No, I have no advice. No advice. Do you think seeing your rushes immediately versus seeing it a little later uh, helps you better with the process? I don't watch even on this whole digital platform. I don't watch myself because oh, you I, don't bother. I am my worst critic. So you wouldn't be rushing to the screen to see your shot? Never go. Never? Don't watch. Because if I watch it, I would ask for a reading. <laughs> so you completely trust the director? Really? I think that's because you were, you never saw it earlier. No, I don't. I said because if I see it, I will criticize. I'm my worst critic and I will ask for another retake and it won't end. So I don't I'm go. sure you've seen your films once they've made. That's when I like to see the film. When it's fully done, absolutely ready for release, I like to see it. So according to you, which has been your best performance till date? It's been a journey. It's been a journey. You can't. It's like asking a mother who's your favorite child. It's been a journey. It's been a long journey, 15 years, where I've worked with the best people in the world. True. So you can't, you can't. What, do you, what would you consider as your worst performance? Most of my films. <laughs> oh, you're too humble, too humble, too humble. Okay, how keep oneself motivated in one's lifetime to enjoy all parts of life? Love what you're doing. Love where you are in your life. You know, I speak for myself when I say that if you want fame and money and a family, once you accomplish all of this, you look for peace of mind. You look for joy. 
you look for time spent alone with your family, with your animals, in your garden, in, uh, you know, time to exhale. Just be. And that's where I'm at. Well, on that note, uh, I think you are the epitome of grace and sophistication. And I'd like to be, become like you when I grew up. Thank you so much, Zina Taman. This has been truly a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much.